back again. Uh, so it's time to actually start doing some endpoints related things. You got into this video on endpoints and you're like, hey, we're going to do endpoints things and I've been doing nothing but UI and demos and things like that. Time to time to hit the hit the ground running. So when it comes to endpoints, uh, we've kind of been going through this process. So we started with the back end things. We started by making a model uh, for like how we're going to save our data on the back end. So we created a movie quotes model object. After that, we created our API. We also chose to, in the last unit, make a web client that's not required, uh, but it did kind of make it more fun to interact with a web client and an iOS client. That's what we're going to do here. Uh, but we did have to make the API, so that's the API Explorer. Uh, and we thoroughly tested it uh, with the API Explorer. Uh, that was the underscore AH API Explorer. And we finished all those steps last time. Now we're getting ready to start in on kind of the, the bottom half of this table. So the first thing is generating the client code. So one neat thing about endpoints is you can actually just uh, do a series of steps uh, and it will presto create some code for you that you can use. The, the presto is what we're going to do in this video. You'll kind of find that generating client code, it's extremely painful the first time you do it. Sorry, this is the first time you do it, I'm guessing, so it's going to be extremely painful. After you do it twice, you're going to say that's not so bad. After you do it three times, you're going to think, ah, oh, that's easy. And after you've done it as many times as you have, you're going to think, why did I ever think that was hard, right? So we're going to generate the client code. Once we've actually created that client code, we're going to build the rest of the app around it. So we're going to show you that step. And then, of course, test and refine is over here. So we're focused right here, generating client code. If you go back into the doc, uh, you can see that we just finished the little UI touch. Uh, the doc is then going to spin into another doc for generating the iOS client library. The reason I do this is because the steps for generating the client library, they're the same regardless of whether you're using um, Objective-C or Swift, right? So it's just kind of going through it. Also, this document is handy because we're going to go through it with movie quotes here, but the next time you like have to generate some client code, this the same process will be the same, right? It's a little shorter the second time. And you'll just have to, in your mind, swap out the word, you know, movie quotes for something else. So the lab is going to be weather picks. So you have to swap that out for weather picks. Later you'll do a grade recorder, swap that out. So when it comes to generating the client code, there are three steps. Um, we're going to do the first two steps in this video, then we'll, we'll punt on the third to the next video. Uh, one thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to add two frameworks. These two frameworks are called the system uh, configuration and the security framework. Let's just go and add those just, just really quick. Those, those are easy. So this first step, you just click on the project itself. If you get to ask a keychain question, just say always allow and, and never ask me again. <laughs> um, and then go down to the linked frameworks and libraries. You'll notice that if you're using Swift, it will start off blank. Uh, but if you're using Objective-C, it will list like core graphics and UI kit and things like that. But if you're in Swift, it'll start off blank. Either way, uh, just in this linked libraries and frameworks, click on plus. Uh, and start typing the word uh, security, uh, and it should bring up the security framework. And then you're going to have to add another one, uh, and the one you're going to have to add is system uh, configuration. There's a few things with system configuration, so you'll actually have to type until the C uh, before it'll auto-populate. So great, we added those two things trivially easy. Uh, so those are the, the first of three steps. Woohoo! Uh, unfortunately, that step's way easier than the others. Uh, the next two steps, so there's two pieces. One is there's code that you're always going to use, no matter what back end you're talking to. Um, it's called Google's uh, Client Library. They call it GTL for Google Transportation Layer Library. And then there's also going to be some specific things for your back end. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go get this uh, client library. It's like, I don't know, 30 files, right? And so we just need to get these 30 files from somewhere. And you have to play the game uh, with, how, with how Google does things. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to put these uh, into their own group uh, just to keep it organized. And I thought I would start off by making these groups up front. Uh, so the thing we're going to do in this video, so I'm just going to right click on here and say new group. And I'm going to say GTL client library, which is just the files we're going to have to copy over. Uh, and then we're also going to make a new group uh, for the movie quotes uh, API files. So we're worried about this one. So where do these files live? Uh, so these files live, Google didn't use GitHub. They, they have their own like GitHub equivalent, right? Uh, so it's code.google.com. 
Um, and you can go click on this link if you want to just go see this website. Uh, so this is all about uh, the Google API client library. Note that it says for Objective-C. This is going to all be in Objective-C, and that's fine. We're going to use bridging headers. No big deal there. Um, there's a lot of things in this project. You could go look at it, and you can read all these, these cool things. Uh, ultimately, what we want to do, though, is we'd want to uh, just download it so we can use it. Uh, and there's information in here for non-members who want a read-only version. Simply need to, to type this command uh, into Terminal to get this, this project. So I'm just going to copy it uh, onto my clipboard. Uh, note that if you're following with the notes, uh, it's got it uh, in here as well. And you're just going to need to open up Terminal. And what you want to do is you want to take Terminal to wherever you want this thing to be installed, right? So you're going to have to just decide, you know, where do you want to go. One trick that I like to do is I like to hit CD space, uh, and then I like to, like, open up Finder. Uh, so here I open up Finder, and I like to find where I want to go in Finder. Uh, and then if I type CD space in terminal, and then I can just drag and drop this in, in here, and it's really, it's really kind of nice. Uh, and then you've got your, your path set uh, to the right place, which is fun. All right, now I want to type that magic command, which I should still have on my clipboard. Uh, so it says SVN checkout. Don't worry, you've already got SVN installed on your computer. You got it when you downloaded uh, Xcode. Uh, and it says check out this thing, um, so SVN trunk. And then this last part here is this is actually what folder you're going to make. So if you wanted to change that last part, you could. But I see no real reason to. I'm just going to go ahead and run it, um, and I'll let it create that folder for me. It's going to go off, and it's going to do its SVN thing. It's going to grab a bunch of files. There it goes. It's off. Um, don't really care how many files it downloads. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of uh, sources, services. So if you want to use Drive or Compute Engine or Books, um, it's all these generated client libraries for you. So this project, it's, it's good for two things. It's good for generating your own. It's also good because it has the code if you're going to use some Google library, which is really kind of neat. Yeah, the things we teach you could be used in a lot, a lot more ways. So, all right, so now we should have this uh, Google API uh, client library read-only. Uh, you can see that it's got some examples in here if you want to go through and look at some examples. Um, it's got the source code that you need. Uh, one of the big things is what is it's in services, has all the different services. We care about two things uh, in this. We care about um, this GTL project, and then later we're going to care about the service generator project. Those are the only things we care about in this. So go ahead and open up the GTL project. So just go ahead, and I like to hit Command and Down Arrow, uh, and it'll open it up. The only thing we're doing with this project is really kind of funny. Is it it has the the files that we need in a in a well organized way. So instead of copy them out of Finder, I actually like to open up this project and just pull them out of here. So if you expand GTL source common, uh, this is like in this area. This is uh, the client library. In order to copy out files, um, you need to open up all the folders that you want to copy from. And we want to open up all the folders uh, that are within um, within common, right? So I, I only care about things that are within common. So I want objects open, utils open, HTTP fetch open, OAuth 2 open, uh, Mac, I want to keep that shut, um, and then Cocoa Touch, I want, to, I want to open that up. And then the nice thing is, is that if you just click on the bottom one, uh, which uh, you know should be like a, a zip file, and then you hold down shift and you click on this top one um, and you hit, uh, well actually instead of hitting copy I just like to drag it. So you just drag it uh, from here and you just plop it onto your GTL client library group. Uh, copy them in, yes copy them in. Um, and then it asks you do you want to make a bridging header? Yes I'm going to need a bridging header because these are all objective C, right? Uh, so it brings them all over. Uh, the one thing it does that I don't like is it puts the bridging header in that same group with them. I, I know why it does that. It's because I told it to. Uh, but I don't really want it there. So I'm going to move it out. Um, and then I'll worry about it later. I just I needed it at some point. And so now I've got uh, the Google Transportation Library. As mentioned, it's about 30 files or so. N no big deal. Um, and so now I've got them. There is one little detail, uh, sorry, this, this library is old, uh, they've been using it for, for decades now, um, 
and you have to, I'm not sure if that's true, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to specify that that library doesn't use uh, ARC. That stands for automatic reference counting. Um, that's a detail, uh, but you've still got to do it, right? So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into your project, uh, your main build target, build phases, and find compiled sources. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a special flag to tell the compiler that these things don't use ARC. If you, if you don't trust me, try to hit Control B right now, uh, and you'll get all kinds of ARC restriction messages, right? So we, we need to fix that, right? So, all right, now I lost where I was at. So into the project, build phases. Uh, what I want to do is I want to start by just selecting all files, uh, and then I'll remove the ones that I, I don't need, right? So I've selected all the files, and now I just need to go through, and I basically need to take out anything that, that I made, right? should be pretty easy to find the ones I made. There's Swift files. Uh, here's a core data model object file. Um, these all say GTL, GTL, GTM, so they're, they're obviously not ones that I made. Uh, here's a couple Swift files, so I'm going to take them out. Um, here's a Swift file. Here's my app delegate, so I take it out as well. I'm just holding down Command and taking these things out. Once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to set a compiler flag on all these other files. What I like to do is I like to double click somewhere near the bottom because my, my window is going to show up on the bottom. And I need to add a special flag. Uh, all flags start with hyphen F, just because, hey, here comes a flag. And this flag is called no uh, hyphen objc hyphen arc. So no objective C arc. As soon as I hit enter, uh, what that should do is that should add it to all the, the files that I have highlighted. Uh, and if I hit Command B again just to do the build, uh, all my build errors should go away. All right, so it felt like a lot of work, uh, but it really wasn't too bad. We were just adding files, right? Uh, the only thing that made it confusing is that, uh, that special flag. So there are three steps. Um, adding the frameworks, done. Uh, adding the GTL client library, done. Uh, so come back next time and we'll generate the client code specific for our movie quotes back in. Uh, and then once we actually get this built, we'll start using it after that. All right, see you next time where we generate some more client code.